All right, welcome everyone. We are a very special day. We're joined by one of my very good friends and longtime streaming inspirations, and uh, Kevin Martin, the newest member of Poker Royalty here. He is on Party Poker's Team Online. Unbelievable day, Kevin. How, how does it feel? Yeah, man, it's a huge day. A uh, long time coming. Been really excited for this. Um, got to put the patch on for the first time. It's clean, it looks sharp, it's amazing. And uh, I'm excited about it, man. The, the party broker team is really fresh. It's really new. I've been good friends with like you know you and you and Jamie and a bunch of others on the team. And I think uh, I think the brand is doing some really good things with the player at the forefront of their mind. So I'm really excited to uh, to really dive into it. And it's like a fresh start. I'm I'm pumped, man. I feel like there's a lot of momentum on my Twitch channel right now. Things are really exciting. You know, 2019 we kind of had a, a tough start to the year for a personal life, but. Through some tough times and some tough moments, it's really inspired me to, to rededicate myself and you know make some health changes and you know refocus on poker a little bit more. So I'm good, man. I'm, I'm really, really good. But before we get crazy to that stuff, Jeff, I, I, have, I have to say congratulations on something way bigger than probably everything we're going to talk about today. Uh, you are a proud new father. I am. It's. I'm. I'll be honest. I'm exhausted. I'm. I'm tired. But it's a great feeling. It's. It's. Uh. It's. It's hard to explain. There's really no feeling like it. I. I, I don't. We could talk about that as well down the line. I was curious on your thoughts. I think we have mentioned before. You do want to have kids at some point, but it's. It's. There's just nothing really to put it. Those of fathers, I see Matt Bernsey in the chat. What's up, bro? I know a lot of you have kids already, but it, it is a weird kind of feeling just every day. And you, you say, it's like, I think Bill Perkins said it best, like a lifetime of worry, but also greatness. You know, you're just always kind of wor thinking about them already. And I think that probably never goes away, even at once they're older and, and mature and grow up. But it, it's a blessing and it's been great. So thank you for asking. It feels good. Yeah, that's really cool. So most of my good friends are a little bit older than me and they are getting into that kid stage a little bit. And they always, uh, I wanted to ask you, they always say it changes your life, changes your perspective. As soon as you have your first or first child, everything changes. And apparently I was listening to a podcast and there's a little bit of science behind that as well. It's like an evolutionary thing that there's actually a physical chemical change in your brain when you become a parent. Like it's actually an evolutionarily proved thing. So I was just wondering, are you, uh, are you, you know, have you noticed this? Is it, are you like, uh, I, I'll this, be, you confirm this? I, so I heard you mention this. I was, I was sweating you and Pav on a Twitch squad the other day. And I actually saw, I think you were taught, you, you saw me in the chat and then you were mentioning it about this exact yeah. thing. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure, but it's something feels a little different. I don't know exactly, but I've kind of been gearing up for fatherhood and, and uh, family mode for a while, sort of putting that into perspective. So I, I, I can't say it. There's something definitely, there's something there. I don't know if I yeah. can confirm that, but it feels like you definitely, when I will say this, when, when my son was arriving, I almost passed out legitimately. I turned white and I thought I was totally fine, but I was not. And they pulled out the smelling alcohol and were putting it in. Oh, and, and wow. they, yeah, I was I was almost down. Like I, I literally didn't it wasn't gonna make it. I had no shot. And um, they pulled it out and I got through it. But it was very very intense. Like you start wondering about the safety of you know your of Amelia of your my wife and the and the baby and it's so close and it's like you you, you know all the time leading up like month before two months three months before a week before you kind of. It's just kind of like, all right, everything's like the same as it is. And then all of a sudden it's like this, it's actually happening. You know, it's like, all right, well, it's, you are now a father or you're now parents and something is living in your responsibility. And it, it just sort of, it took, it overpowered me and I, I was yeah. not ready for it. But um, I can imagine the hospital, I wonder what percent of fathers pass out during the childbirth. I imagine it's like pretty decent. And I'm, I'm worried about, I'm definitely, when, when I have a baby, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be involved and I'm for sure going to pass out. I've given blood. <laughs> I've given blood twice in my life, yeah. volunteered to give blood, passed out both times. I'm two for two in passing out. I couldn't make it through the the blood the transfu transfusion or whatever it's called. And uh, so I, I'm a very weak stomach when it comes to hospitals and environments. And I'm sure, you know, the person you love with all your heart is in danger. It's a very dangerous thing. And then your brand new child who you're just going to meet for the first time, I, Jeff, it's, I, I'm going to pass out with you, buddy. It's a lot. I was, I was right there. I, think, I, would, I would bet that the amount of alcohol – nose sniffs is high. I don't think people actually get to the pass out level, but it definitely happens. It's not zero. That's for sure. I mean, so yeah. So thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. But you know, the day, this is your day. I had my day last week with the, the birth of my son, but today you are signed with 
Party Poker. I'm also a member. Um, you know, we've heard the news about Jamie, the Pav, Matt. Patrick, it goes on. The list, there's so many great streamers and, and it's a great core group. Uh, it's really nice to be a part of it and the changes in the, tra the trajectory of Party Poker. But, you know, tell us about what does that mean for you to, you know, you've been, how many years have you been streaming now? Tell everyone at home a little about your Twitch, your journey and how you've arrived here. Yeah. One of the newer people who got on the platform, I think the first couple of people that cracked the platform in 2015 was Jason Somerville and then Jamie Staples followed quickly. Jamie Staples was pretty much the first person who went from like, a person living in his mom's basement to grinding online, to growing a following, to becoming a bit of a poker superstar. And it really opened up my eyes. I remember the first day when Jamie told me, um, we gotta get on Twitch. He's like, dude, you have to get on Twitch. You have to get on Twitch. And I, meanwhile, was playing low stakes cash games live, you know, making very small amounts, but I was making like, uh, you know, $22 an hour playing one, two and two, five. I'm like, Jamie, dude, I'm living the life, man. I'm playing a card game. I'm making $22 an hour. It's like, what, why would I want to go on Twitch? This is the life. I'm a poker professional. And he's like, dude, trust me. You have to get on Twitch. And then uh, I went off to Big Brother Canada for a short stint. And while I was away from society for those three days, I came back. And the first thing Jamie told me was that he, he blew up. He had a huge channel. He got sponsored. It's like, wow, this is something that's really going to catch on. So I had a radio bracket, a, radio bracket, uh, a little bit of familiarity with broadcasting and, and talking to people and then my new passion of poker so I thought it would work beautifully and I got on and I was an interesting story Jeff the first time I ever played poker tournaments was on Twitch I never played poker tournaments before I played live cash games not very good I beat the games games were good but like I loaded up tournaments and um I just played I played tournaments like all all I played high stakes I jumped into the high stakes right away I jumped into medium stakes and very quickly I got crushed I lost a lot of money and I lost a lot of money for, you know, three or four months. And my excuse was like, oh, poker, there's variance. I'm running bad. And then after about four and a half months, I got some feedback that I was like, wow, you know, maybe I'm just actually not very good at tournament poker. And so I sought out the help of, like, I got a couple coaches. I, you know, I, I started working with Elliot Rowe. And he politely, he was very polite, but very firmly told me, he's like, you're not running bad. You're running at EV. You're just playing very badly. And if you don't improve, you're going to continue to lose money. That's just how it's going to work. So it was a big wake-up call. I was like, if I'm going to Twitch and broadcast poker, I might as well take this seriously and try to get really, really, really uh, good and try to improve. And so my whole journey was about playing $10 average buy and playing the small stakes, finally getting better, beating those games, moving up to the mid-stakes, moving up to the high stakes. And I really showed a poker journey on Twitch. You know, a lot of people, when they start streams, they're already big games, big crushers. They've been around for a long time. I take pride in the fact that I was able to come on as a recreational player and show the entire process live on Twitch, every hand I played uh, to make where I am at today. And it's still, I'm not close to world class or anything. And every time I, I jump into some of the tougher tournaments online, the high stakes, I still feel like I'm very outclassed and people push me around. But I'm very proud of my journey and it's been amazing and I'm having, I've had amazing support on my Twitch channel. And it's still getting going. My average mine is the highest it's ever been on my Twitch channel. And um, I mean, I'm going to be streaming tonight all, all this week and we'll see where it can go, you know, big times, Jeff. It's, it's great. I, I will say a couple things that with, it's been special to watch the journey um, with you in particular. You were, I think you were one of the first subs I ever subbed to J is Somerville. And then I saw you and Jamie. And then of course we've been on, you know, pretty much the same team the entire way. We've done some really cool stuff with uh, Streamboat, And then of course the stream house, I think that was a turning point for me with Twitch and in my career was doing that house with you and Jamie and Matt in Montreal. It was amazing and it was fun. We were up, we did like the charity, raised over I think 20,000 for the Michael Phelps Foundation. We had great times, great laughs. And, and, and really that was like the stream house was just such a meaningful part of my career and like kind of got me re about it, talked some stuff, learned about vlogging, some other things, YouTube. Um, you were, I think you were the one who got me on Snapchat at the time. It was popular. Like we were talking, kind of bouncing ideas and got, there was just a lot of excitement. So that was always very memorable to me. And I do remember you were in the, one of the first streams I ever watched and subscribed to. And um, yeah, man, it's great. It's, it's really impressive to see. I'll say this, the people at home that know Kevin or may have seen him stream, but the, 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 the level of play you bring, I think, you know, Matt, Staples, Pav, um, Jamie, and yourself, like there's been a tremendous amount of work and improvement in the game and in the results show. And also not even online, but your live results are some of the craziest I've ever seen. Like what you're doing in Calgary, I'm not sure if you're just the, the best in the world right now, or if you're, if that place is, there's a, there's a great edge, but I mean, your, your live results are insane. It almost feels like there was like two or three times where I'd look at your tweets and I was like, 
this is this the this is happening again or is this like from before you're just like winning live tournaments like winning not like seconds or thirds but you're actually like beating and how many people are in those fields and they're winning 20 yeah. 30 50,000 in live events it's really crazy impressive no matter what no matter even if you're playing with people who've never played poker it would be hard to do let alone people yeah. that are playing professional so can you talk a little bit about the live success so yeah, it's been the it was most of twenty eighteen. It's been the last year and a half where I've been on the the craziest heater playing live poker, and I, I it's been just insane. And I have taken some moments to reflect. You know, I just don't think it'll ever happen again. Like the math is too strong against. Like it's stupid, Jeff. Every time I needed to win a big flip, every time I needed to suck out, you know, I do do. I don't want to undersell my like my work ethic and how much time I put into my game. And I, I think I'm just crushing the fields, but also I'm running really well at the good moments. So. Yeah, it's it's been it's been bizarre. I was just looking at. I, I'm very uh, OCD. I, I love graphs. I love I love spreadsheets. So every time I play live, you know, I I, I create these graphs and stuff. And I, I tweeted mine out a, a little while ago. It's pretty it's pretty unbelievable the the results I've had the last uh, the last year and a half. It's just it's just it's a lot of work ethic and a lot of focus. Something I talk about from live poker. And I think if you want to improve on your immediate live poker results. The main thing I can talk about is just absolute focus and intensity. If you're playing a live tournament, have fun, joke with your neighbors, have a good time. But when you're in a hand, it's your time to do some work. It's your time to put in some good decisions and try to maximize your EV at the tournament. Too often do I see people fold, they go on their phone, they chat during a hand, they're loosey-goosey, eating a sandwich, some people might say, whatever you want to say. But like, when I'm in a hand, I have a good time. I like to create a fun environment. But that's my moment to make some good decisions and showcase my skill. And like, you should basically see every hand that goes to showdown playing live poker. If you're out of a hand, watch the hand. Try to put people on a range. You know, for example, let's say somebody shows down Jack Eight offsuit from under the gun. Hand goes on. Jack Eight offsuit is shown. Dealer sweeps into the muck. If you miss that information. You're missing out on money. You are throwing money off away, burning money by not picking up this information. Because if your opponent is playing jacket offsuit from under the gun, your entire strategy has to change. Everything. You, your three betting strategy, your flatting strategy, it's just a massive amount of information. So I, I, every time a hand is shown, I really pride myself during those live runs that I saw every single showdown, every single bet size that I watched. And like I'm still having fun chatting to people, but that's uh, that's the opportunity to do business. So. That's the one thing I can I can stress, and Elliot Rowe taught me that, is that if you are in a poker tournament, treat that as if it's the most important thing going on in your life. The phone does not need to be answered. You don't need to go on social media. Just try to put your heart and soul into every single tournament you play. I would I would like to touch on that for two well, two things. Elliot Rowe, I work with as well. They, that no question. I think he's the results in general in my life, not not even necessarily poker, like just the power of what he does and the courses he does. I, I think it's great. I've done his live seminar stuff. I, I really am a big believer in the mental side of the game. Um, I, I mean, makes a lot of sense. Also, raise your edge. We both work with Ben oh. and do that. And I know, I mean, you, I know you've been put a lot of work into that and studied, and and it, the results show there. Um, how, how would you let's let's talk about that? Kind of being as a content creator, if you will, streaming on Twitch. You know, how much do you think? that that takes away or that that happened because like I know for myself I was talking with Elliot and being transparent you know being realistic with my results cuz I, I had won 10 years in a row playing live yeah. poker and then I've lost two years in a row or not, you know, not having winning years at the World Series where I just every year I won playing multis in the, over the course of the six weeks and then I started looking at it, I was like what happened in 2017 and then I started oh wait I started a vlog I was coming to tournaments three, four, five hours late a lot of the time. I was burnt, I learning how to do vlogging, all these things. I'm on my phone 24/7 at the table. I'm, 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 I'm making stories. I'm doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm not present. Um, and then I was like, all right, well maybe. And I was like, man, I'm running bad. But well, was I? Yeah, partly. But also, I'm doing nothing to, 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 to be my best in those areas. And then again, at 2018, I didn't have a great. World Series and same thing. I was like, I was doing fitness plans, coming to tournaments late. I wasn't fully present. So I think that that's like, that's so underrated. And if you see it all the time, people at the table, like you said, if you're not seeing the showdowns at the table, at the least, you're just, you're not really there. 
You know, you're not competing. You can't expect to win and play against other. If you're, you know, other players are very talented now too. Yeah. And you have so you know Elliot kind of shook, and then he's like, all right, when I'm playing, I want to play, and that's that. Um, higher, you know, whatever. And and so, how do you feel? How how has that been for you though? I mean, is that something you've noticed that maybe you've just sort of shut it off? Like certain days, like all right, I'm on Twitch, I'm on Twitch, but when I'm playing, I'm playing live because I, I think that's maybe something that's hard to balance, and I, I struggle with that myself. Yeah, it's, it's just like what your goals are. Because as a content creator, for you, it's very important to to get that content out and you're making a decent amount of money by growing your audience, right? So it's a balance. And Jeff, you're playing some tough games. Like you play high rollers. When you play online, you fire the higher stakes. You're against some sharks. You're not against the softies anymore. You play some really tough games. Yeah. Um, tougher than tougher than I play, for sure. But yeah, when, when I'm in a live tournament, I, I, I put my, my heart and soul into it. Even if it's, even like, I used to have an issue where the smallest binds on my schedule, I would autopilot, and I wouldn't care about them. Right. So when I'm playing live poker, if I'm playing a 215 or a $300 tournament, I just wouldn't care about it, and I would play my CDE game. And I really said, like, why um, Why did I register this tournament? Why did I register this tournament if I'm not going to put my, my yeah. full focus on it? So that's something I've really changed, and even with streaming. So my online, my average buy-in right now is like $55. If I downswing, I'll adjust. If I crush, I'll, I'll probably fire some higher stakes. But I used to fire the bottom ends of my binds. My eleven dollar tournaments is, is the bottom end right now. Yeah. And I used to just autopilot them and just not care about them. Like, why did I register? Why did I register? If yeah, I'm not it takes stuff? up focus. Then you're like, you, yes. even, if, even if you, even if it's like irrelevant, you're just kind of like all in push fold or like you're just not looking at it. It takes away from the others. Like that's something too. I think I really struggled on Twitch. And I look when I play like two tables or four tables or my last tables, I just seem to do very well. But a lot of times it's like. You, the time banks go out. I'm playing six tables, two off the screen. My stream suffers because I'm not giving them the adequate attention. You know, that's one thing I really respect about Somerville and Jake. Like, he would always one table. He was like the yeah. master of he one table to explain everything perfectly. And there's a balance in there. But not saying you should one table, but maybe it's four max or five max ever. And it's like, then you tell your chat, hey, look, guys, I'm going in the matrix. Apologize and, and realize that. But I think that's like really hard. And to find the right balance, equilibrium, and be honest with yourself. I'm not. Not very good at multi-tabling. I'm just not. Yeah. I, I'm not built for it. You got the more. My brain out doesn't there. work that way. I play six. I play six tables. Yeah. Focus on those with chat. That's it. I, I I've tried to load up number seven, and number eight, and my entire play suffers. Yeah. My interaction suffers. People like all in path can ten table and play it well. I'm not at that level yet. Yeah. Especially because when you are learning new concepts, there's a huge difference between learning a concept and putting it into your game. When you're learning a new concept, let's say you make a change in. Let's say you, you've made a change to your three-betting strategy. You're going to start three-betting hands like, let's say, king-nine suited more often, queen-nine suited, or like you're going to include some, a more polarized bluffing range there. You can't just – it doesn't. it's not magic. To make strategical changes to your game takes a lot of time and a lot of focus. And like if you're playing 10 tables, you're not going to really execute on the level that you want to. So it, 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 it's all up to you, though. Like let's say you're a poker content creator. You want to fire the highest stakes. Because people love watching high stakes. If you fire all the 1Ks, you're going to get a massive audience on Twitch. Well, let's say you lose like 75K in a year. Well, you can make $200,000 from content. Like, you see you see what I mean? There's a balance. Of There's course. a balance. It's of, an of equation. Like, it's, how, a, it's, a, yeah. it's a formula, all of it. And that's what's so fun. Because it, it's – there's literally – you have to figure out what's best for you and think about it. And I, I, I would – if I could rewind my career on Twitch, there's like – I would do things a lot differently. And – I, I'm constantly at a fight with it because it's very difficult. So it's interesting. I, uh, it's interesting to hear you say your formula is like six tables. It's also the format too. Are you playing six max hypers? Are you playing nine yeah. handed deep? That's all matters. It ma are you playing bounties? Yeah. You know, what, what are you playing? What are the, what's the, you know, what is the risk reward? It, it, it is, a, it's also there. I found myself in spots where you feel getting deep. Have you ever been deep in a tournament and you're like, man, this is crazy. And it's like, you like, no, you're supposed to jam Jack 10 suited on the open on the cutoff from the small blind for 17 blinds, but you're like, you know, I mean, my viewership's really peaking and this is exciting. I'm fucking deep. I'm going to, I'm going to take a little less. Like that's happened to me a few times where I like yeah. look back and I'm like, man, why did I not do that? So, you know, I, I think there's also a little stream equity and that kind of stuff goes into it. And it, it's interesting. The stream dynamic is, it's a yeah. real thing. There's a lot of moving parts. One thing, I, one thing I think I've always done pretty well at is if I believe I have to take a spot, I've always taken it. No matter what, two story. About two months into my streaming career, I played a hand so badly. I had a lot of viewers deep in the tournament. I played Ace King so badly. I'm on a four-minute delay. I said, 
fuck this. I don't want anyone to see this. And I hard shut off my computer. Oh, man. <laughs> I, hard, I hard shut off my computer. I loaded everything back up. This is how insecure I was two months in. I loaded everything back up, refired the tables, refired the streams. Like, hey guys, internet cut out. I'm sorry. Back to the game. I was so embarrassed. Now there's like a special thing. If I punt and make mistakes on the stream, which I, I put my hand up all the time. I played what? What was this hand yesterday? I saw it. I, I saw it. I think where you put you like oh, barely, someone who just hosted dude. you at Ace Three and then you, but you turned oh, a decent God. card to barrel at least. Yeah. But you just yeah. But there's no. I there, I, I punted so hard in this one hand and I'm like what, clip it. Let's look at that. And you know I make mistakes. I put my hand up. So it, it shows that like uh, I've I've kind of left that insecurity behind. But back to that point of like if you're if you're in a deep spot if 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 you know let's say I'm coaching a brand new player or wanting some of the just go for it. Trust your instinct. Take the shot. People are so afraid to bust turns. This is especially for live poker. Live poker, you know, if you plan to play a tournament, it's your Saturday activity. I'm going to play this $400 tournament on Saturday. Busting it within 20 minutes feels bad. Mentally, that feels worse yeah. than like bubbling. Guess what? You made the bubble and the person who busts first makes the exact same amount of money. But mentally for a recreational player, it feels bad because that was their, their activity. You know, you go home, honey, I buzz, I lost in 20 minutes. And they're like, what, you only played 20 minutes? So people are afraid to bust tournaments. Busting tournaments doesn't feel good. But guess what? It's just part of reality. You were, and, and another thing with that, it feels worse mentally. We have to get rid of this right now. It feels worse if you bluff a tournament off. If you bluff off all your chips, as you're walking to your car, there's that little voice in, this, in your head that says, I didn't have to do that. I could have just not bluffed. So a lot of people are scared to bluff off the tournaments. Guess what? You're supposed to bluff it off. If you never bluffed yourself out of a tournament, you're doing something wrong. There are spots where you're supposed to bet the flop, bet the turn, and then shove the river as a bluff. And if your opponent has a call in, GG, you're out. Yeah. That's okay. That's You were supposed to have that feeling. And if you never have that feeling, you're doing something wrong. I'd way rather, like, especially if a poker player is newer to the game and really trying to get better, I'd way rather have that person be too wide, too aggressive, too spewy, than too tight. Too tight now in 2019 doesn't win poker terms. You have to accumulate chips. Of course, it's a balance, but yeah. I think poker talent can be discovered when people are thinking outside the box, taking some crazy lines, and they punch it off. Oh well, like it didn't work out this time. At least, at least you tried. At least you went with your gut. Absolutely. I, yeah. No, I agree with that. I think that's something I've been looking at a lot too. Trying to trying to find spots, get more creative, loosen it up, take some big risks because it's you know to bubble a tournament or get to not cash, but versus having a shot to be a top stack, it's just so valuable. Once you understand that, you know, you really have to get those top three, four, five spots. So bubbling here and there and not making the money in some higher variance, 40, 60, 50, 50, 60, 40 spots, you know, you, you just got to kind of take those in, in some scenarios. So, yeah, I mean, explain, like when you attribute your success in the turning, was there a moment when, I I, th I, I literally saw it earlier today, but now I think you, you re-put the your pin tweet on Twitter was um, but you showed your graph and like you about Reddit and you were studying poker and like you kind of made a shift like talk a little bit about your study um, methodology and and your routine yeah. because I think that's something I also find very difficult because you have they have access you want to go do the razor edge program you could sit do an hour two hours a day and you're going to get really good at poker but it's hard like streaming hard, you want to play you want to study you want to have your you have your girlfriend you have Peely you have you know there's friends family you want to hang out you want to do all these things you want to travel and then you want to study so how do you find yourself making time to study like what's your regimen do you have a routine where you say all right I'm blocking out the world. I'm two hours today. Like what, what, what do you do to improve? Yeah. I usually do one hour blocks and, um, I've done the raise your edge course twice. I think it is the best content out there for most people. Yeah. If you're a person who has good results at the higher stakes or the, I'm sure you want to go somewhere else. I'm sure it's time to get into some solve work and really hammer that home. But for the vast majority of poker players, that would be absolute bullshit. If you're a poker player who doesn't have good results and you're just wanting to get better, Forget the solver talk, forget the GTO talk, that's not for you. You need to learn absolute fundamentals how to exploit your opponents. That's what's gonna win at the low stakes, mid stakes, or, or you know, even sometimes in the high stakes. The solver talk, the GTO talk, I think that that is gonna become, that's gonna trickle down the line, you know, as everything with poker strategy, the, the end boss implements it, and then, you know, it, it goes down to the mid stakes, and eventually you see even micro stakes trying to do it. There's stuff uh, that's happened throughout the years like that. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I personally, I love going into the lab and learning a concept and applying it. I equate it to like going to the gym, right? You wake up, you have so much plans. You really want to go to the gym? No. But when have you, when have you left the gym and been like, that was a waste of time? Never. And you feel amazing. You put that time, you grind. Learning a concept and then showing my audience on Twitch chat, like, you know, 
I've, I've changed my three betting strategy from the big blind a little bit to include you know better combinations of hands like king six offsuit, king four offsuit. And every time I do it and it works, I'm just like so happy. I'm like guys, I just studied. This is what I've been focusing on the last week. And also on top of that, you gain theoretical knowledge to make better poker decisions and confidence. Like right. if you put in a bunch of time into your game for a couple months in a row, are you're gonna be you're gonna be feeling so confident at the table? You're gonna feel like you're one of the best players there. It just changes your whole aspect. You know, it's just like if if you don't work out in real life, you're gonna get chubby and, and lazy. It's the same thing with your poker brain. If you're not actively trying to find information and improve your decisions, you know, your poker brain is gonna get fat and lazy, and you're gonna fall behind. And what would you say? Do you have? Would you? Would you give a ratio for studying to playing uh, roughly? or do, I mean, I guess it goes through spurts, right? Because there's times where yeah. you're just going to be playing because you've studied for a week or two or whatever, and now you're just playing mode. But do you, do you try to – do you have like a rule or do you, do you, would you aim towards a ratio? Or what would you recommend to someone that is in a spot where they need to start studying now? Because no one wants to just put – stop for two weeks or a month of playing yeah. and just no. go do it. It's very difficult and almost unrealistic. Maybe that's yeah. the right move, but what, what would you say is like a good way to do it? Just study, try to set an hour or two hours a day then? It, de it depends on your goals and what you want to do. Um, if, if you're in a spot like I was playing an average buy-in of $10 and losing because I was bad, I, I, I was like, I'm going to go hardcore. This is this is everything. Else. So, I, so the first couple months when I really wanted to improve, I studied about 15 hours a week, almost two hours a day. I would lock myself in, no phone, go over concepts two hours a day. And that was really, really tough. I've obviously dialed it back. Right now, I'm not super in the lab. I would say like an hour before the stream, I go over a bunch of push fold spots. I review my notes. I look at hands from the previous day. And that's about it, you know, good enough to keep me fine tuned. So it depends with what, what your goal is at. Also, effective study, effective study. If you, <laughs> you know, there's, a, there's only so much your brain can take. And I would really advise to hit home one concept and then lock that in. Don't study four different concepts in one day. Don't study three betting. Don't study river decisions. Don't all, if you smash that all in one day, your brain's going to have a tough time isolating that. So uh, Elliot Rowe always uh, talked about like professional sports. For example, one of the best things you can do is isolate different skills and then work on that single skill set. You know, if, if, if you're at a high level of a sport, you're not just going to play basketball. You're going to spend one hour really hammering home your free throws. Good. Got that skill down. Then you're going to work on dribbling for an hour. Really work on your dribbling and your three-point shooting. Elliot Rowe is a big fan of isolating skill sets and really fine-tuning them. And then that'll bring the whole puzzle together. So it depends on your goals. I mean, a lot of people have real jobs and they don't have the time. This, this is our full-time job. So, like, you know, one hour a day is really, really tough. Try 30 minutes. Try 30 minutes. You know, Twitch streams are a great way to, to, to learn, but get some training content. Raise Your Edge is a free YouTube channel where one of the best teachers in the world is putting out free content. Every time I go to that channel, I'm just blown away by the lack of I, You know what's crazy? What? I find sometimes, <laughs> and I'm going to be really honest because my like I've done Raise Your Edge. I've gone through it and the range viewers and I've done some of the work, but I have not religiously I, – I use Raise Your Edge. I done the work, I coach with Ben, but I haven't gone through, you said you've gone through two times, I haven't gone through every second of every video. The bounty course I've been meaning to get through, I haven't got through that. I mean, that, that like I play a lot of these tournaments, like I should do it. Yeah. Um, so I haven't done all of the work. I've done, I endorse it because I know it's the best, I know Ben's the best and I've used it. I just haven't done, you know, if you're giving me a one to 100 scale, it's not, it's not, I should be a hundred. It's not, it's in the, you know, I give myself a B and that's not good enough. Like at some point, it's just like I gotta, say, all right, you know, instead of doing this video or whatnot, it's just fun though. I like podcasts, I like content. I have a son now, I have a wife, I travel. It's like, there's a lot yeah. of excuses, but still there's ways I can, there's times where I'm not doing whatever, I'm bullshit, I'm, you know, messing around or I watch a podcast or do something else instead of studying. And, you know, I am committed. I know I need to get better because yeah, there's, it's tough, man. The game's gotten tough. And part of the, part of what we do is people want to see results. They want to see, you know, Pav is just on fire. Matt's been on yeah. fire. Jamie's doing great. He's working hard. You're working hard. It's just like, it's competitive out there and it's cool to play all the 500s and 1Ks and, and all that. But it's like, you know, you know, it's, I'd, you got to win. I'd rather win a $50 tournament than 
just bubble or, or min cash a 1K. So yeah, there's a, there's a fine line with that. I want to take a second here to say what's up to Burnsy, JJ Corrado, fellow streamer on Twitch, saying two of his favorites here um, in the chat, man. Congrats to Kevin. Yes, big day for Kevin signing with Party Poker, and uh, he's going to be streaming. So we actually have a bit of a time crunch. Kevin's so in the matrix. He wants to get on. He wants to go get... I, I know that feeling. I remember my first signing with Party and the, the smile on my face and then wanting to get on Twitch and just kind of like... It's just like a... It's like a birthday it's like a childbirth yeah. it's exciting it's just like you, the energy is big so we want to make sure you get on time in about 45 minutes there are a lot of questions on twitter i'm going to scroll through quickly here and just take a look so we can run over this we're going to give away three 55 dollar omaha series tickets from party poker today kevin will re, uh click uh, the competition agency, the retweet at the end. So if you guys want to get a question for Kevin, get it in there. We'll try to get to a handful of these. I mean, I have so much to talk about with Kevin, but we will answer. I, I, there's some great questions. So we'll hit those Instagram as well. There's a, you can ask swipe up. There's a questions thing you can write there. We'll take a look at some of those. Um, we have, we have uh, a lot of projects, man. I hope we get to, you know, it'd be fun to do a stream house type situation again a stream boat you know yeah. thirst lounge tens popping down in the caribbean that's always available for us to go down there and, and check in with wild bill of course the stream boat or stream house stream boat that whole thing got cut short with the hurricane which was crazy i know you and i almost stayed and luckily we didn't there was a prison break on the island where we were yeah. like it was i can you imagine i can just picture us like in the corner just huddled up like praying i mean that would have been literally yeah. if we had made it out it would have been a great story but like it would have been insane Dude. that was like yeah. we were literally we were like close we were like yeah. maybe we should just stay i mean that we was, have a, we have a specialized skill set but in terms of like alpha male survival of fittest fire festival act you know chaos yeah. i don't think we'd survive i no, think we'd be the first ones to get chopped not our not our best uh scenario for you and i so we got <laughs> got out of there hopefully we get to do some cool stuff down there of course uh yeah man it, it's it's uh it, it seems the squad mode talk to me a little about squad mode can you can you actually work this through for me because i truthfully can't yes. wait to get on and do this but i'm having a little hard time understanding so let's say you go live <laughs> at six o'clock I hop on two hours later or whatever tomorrow, you know, it's in a time where I want to squad when you're on there. How do, how does that sync up? Does it matter if we're on different times and delays or no? So it, it works much better if you're on the same delay. Like if we squad and we have different delays, cause you play a little bit higher stakes. You might have a six minute delay where I'm pretty good with four minute delay. The content isn't that good, but if you can get a team of poker players together and sync up your delays and all go on the same time, it's really good. Because there are lapses of energy in a poker stream. There's just some times where you're card dead and you might not have an interesting spot for 20 minutes. So one of my favorite things to do is load up like three of my favorite streams in squad mode. And then whenever I see them have a big hand, I jump over there. So it's more nonstop action. It really came together the other day. I was streaming a final table and Pav was on the final table as well. So Pav and I final table, smaller tournament, but it's probably like 1.2K up top or something. We were on the same delays. And so people had both of our streams open, and we actually got into some super interesting hands. He owned me in a spot where he bluff shoved the river. Oh, you were same I, final table. I thought you meant you both were on same final, final table. table. Oh, that's cool. So that's when the squad mode really works out well. Right. I remember back in the day, Jamie, uh, Jamie Staples and uh, Jason Somerville were on the same table in a 1K. And everyone was losing their mind because this is like the two biggest streamers, and they played hands against each other. Now with squad mode, if you... It really shines when you have two streamers uh, playing hands against each other. You can see both the whole cards. It was just incredible content. The, the times I've seen it recently, it's been you and Pav last week or so doing some of that. And I, that's like the time zone I'd probably go and I, I just getting my setup in the Bahamas. I just got it. So I'm going to be back and forth. It's pretty easy, probably three, just over three hours door to door. So I'm going to be bumping back and forth and hopefully get some of that going. I know Party Poker has some huge series, the KO series. I got the Omaha series now. The I think on May 12th it starts. There's going to be some huge huge action on the site. So it's going to be fun. I want to do that. But let me ask you, let's say we both did five minute delay. Like, does it sit? Because it looked like you're synced up exactly. What if you what if it's like 30 seconds off or something? Like, how is it exactly the same? Uh, it, it shouldn't be. I mean, there's like a natural delay with the Twitch servers, depending on where you're broadcasting. But if we're on the same delay, it should be within five, five seconds, four seconds, or even or even spot. Oh, so it doesn't matter then you could literally if you started at four minutes away, it just, I guess that I'm trying to think how that works. Like, I'm just saying, if your stream started at four o'clock. No, I don't, I don't understand what the question is. It, I, so, it's a four minute should, delay. If you're on the same delay, it should be perfect. Like, there will be a, maybe a second or two off. But if you're on the same delay, it should be, it should No, I know. I was just trying to mentally think about it. I, I was like, I'm saying, for example, if you start at 6 p.m. Eastern today, 
and I start yes. at 6 p.m. Eastern in 45 seconds. It doesn't matter yeah. because it's still 40, it's just four minute delay from where you currently are. So if me and you are on the phone talking, we have a four minute delay and we're synced up. Yeah, we should be, it should be okay. bang on. Cause yeah, it seemed even basically if, instantaneous. So it was really- Even if you were streaming for like seven hours and then I jump on in squad mode, like squad mode is incredible, dude. You gotta, you know, I know you're busy. Like it's, it's tough to put Twitch at the priority for you, dude. But you can, but if we squad mode, point. you can mute, right? So you both are, people are watching yeah. squad mode, but we don't have to talk, but any time, then how do we, we still have to call or go on discord and make a phone call or can you we can just mute. like unmute and be talking? It's an endless possibilities of magical. I content. want it all. It's, I want to do it, it all. Dude, it's like it stream is, boat. Is we're really basically exciting. stream house. We're essentially yeah. you have access to a, it's even better than a stream house. Like it really is. It seems like crazy how fun it could be done correctly. And it just seems great. I mean, it's a brilliant idea. So that's yeah, it, it. And it really shone the other day, Pat and I were playing some heads ups for, uh, we, we just jumped, jumped in some $1 heads up. We were betting a lot of money on the side. And then somehow we got the, we were doing 1k flips and uh, he, he got me pretty good, which hurt, but like, I saw that too. I, I've been I've been having separation anxiety. I've seen you guys having a little bromance over there. I want to get back in there and I want to mix it in and have some fun. I, mean, I remember you used to do a lot of calls on the phone with people. And I know we did it once or twice where we'd call in, but it's not you know it's just not the same. You're like yeah. talking on the phone with one table. This is crazy. So this is this is the future. It's inception. It's it's amazing. Twitch is doing great things. Uh, it's man, it's really really fun. Who are some of your? Who do you like to? Who are some of the up and coming and, and streamers you would say that you've been really impressed with? Because it, it, there's a lot now. Is there any people yeah. that have been really jumping out to you? I mean, I'm really, I'm really pumped about uh, being on Team Party. Obviously, I, I think uh, some big moves have been made, and, and there's some competition in the market. I will, I will. I had a great three years with PokerStars, and I wish them nothing but the best. Some of the decisions they made weren't perfect. They weren't amazing, and you know, I hope going, hope going forward they provide tournaments that are beatable with decent rank, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I, I won't shit talk them. They were very good to me and, and uh, basically changed my life. I, I, I shouldn't have gotten a sponsor when I did it. And they took a shot at me. So Yeah, I got, um, I'll say the same. I have nothing negative to say. I'm just like, it was just one of those things. Two people are like, oh, did they drop you or what happens? Like, no, renewal was on the table. Yeah. It was just the right, it was the right time, right place. Party was hungry, ready to make a statement. They wanted to go big. And, you know, I, I think I was more aligned with the vision of that company. It's that simple. It's just like, it's pretty, it's basic economics and, and overall just thought it made like it's just a different vibe and it's it's it is what it is and people get traded and look and like the thing about poker i think people are they make a bigger deal because there's it's a small pool like this is basically the professional league of, of streaming of poker if you will um and there's not 32 teams there's two to five or six like really two main ones and you know you can mix in some other name like other other teams right let's just call it six five six teams like there's just, it's going to be, it seems more dramatic when it happens because it's so close to home in it, but it's really just part of, part of life and part of, um, dynamics. Like things happen, people leave, people get better, you know, different opportunities, different times. And, and that's yeah, it. Yeah. And people, people are going to shit talk no matter what. And, and that's something like social media comments and stuff really used to get to me too. But yeah. I've, I've, I think I'm, I'm in a pretty good place with an understanding every time if you're a content creator or whatever, you don't even need to be, it doesn't matter. It, even in real life, if someone is talking negatively about you, that has that has nothing to do with you. Yeah. There's a difference between positive criticism from people you trust and like, like if someone came out to me and said, Kevin, like you know the way you talk to people or something, I'd be willing to listen. But in terms of like, on the other day on my Twitch stream, someone came in my channel and and they said, Kevin, you're lying about your results. Don't lie to people. I was just like, oh, like hey, welcome to the stream. Yeah, how are you doing? Uh, all my results are open. You can go look. You know some. They're not amazing. They're okay, but like you can go check it out. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for coming here. Where in the past, I would have probably thrown me off course. Really got me negative and thinking it. Some, you know, I check raise. I check raise. People love to project their negativity. You know, yeah. and I make mistakes all the time. If I make a bad play, like what amazing poker player in the world is going through Twitch streams and shit talking people? Like is Fader Holtz really on my stream being like, wow, that was a terrible check raise for top set? You know, and they've done intensive studies on negative people on the internet and trolls, people who are projecting negativity on others. Yeah. And very rarely, they've, they've done real life studies where they've tracked these people. And it's sad because very often these people have a very low level of happiness. These people, you know, aren't healthy. They're, they're not successful. And so instead of changing what they're doing, instead of looking inwards at what they can change, they're just projecting negativity on other people. It's the classic, oh, instead of working on myself, if I just cut down every other tree in the forest, I can be taller. Like yeah, it's, it's such a it's such a negative uh, way to look at. It. So 
uh, you know, I've gotten much better with negativity. It just doesn't matter. You know, I'm not going to let them throw me off my flow. You got to flow, man. It's important out there. You got to keep it high, the energy high. And that, I mean, I, for me, that's, it's all, it is true. Like it, it, and that's part of mental maturity and, and understanding that too, and realizing people that are negative and why, like, it, it's just like, it's hostile, it's unneeded. And you got to realize they generally have some massive problems, issues. And it is what it is. It comes with the territory. People are going to target yeah. you. People are going to be jealous. People are going to be whatever, for whatever reason, they're going to hate, they're going to, and it's just part of the, yeah. part of the deal. So, um, and just to hammer home that point, I've been watching a lot of uh, NBA basketball right now in the playoffs. I love NBA basketball. Yeah. And every every time I go in these videos, I look at the comments and then you know, Kevin Durant sucks. He never comes up in clutch. James, you know, Harden is the worst. Just there's a massive amount of people. Okay, hey, these guys are multimillionaires. These are the best basketball players in the world. And there's a bunch of nobodies just projecting their negativity onto them. So it, you know, those people are at the 0.0001% in their field. If you're playing in the NBA playoffs, you're you're some of the best basketball talent that's probably ever lived, right? And then a bunch of nobodies is going to talk shit. Who, Dem Dem TV was streaming the other day, and a couple hands didn't go his way. And then a bunch of people in chat said, wow, this guy isn't that good. It's like, okay, you're the best. He's like one of the best poker players in the world, and people are projecting their negativity onto him. So it's just like, you know, you got to be appreciative almost. If your audience is at a size where you're going to get some negative feedback, it means like, dude, you're doing some good things growing your audience quite large. You got to have haters, man. If you don't have a hater, what do you got? Or what are you doing? Really? It's uh, it's part of the thing. It comes with it. It's all good. Um, so yeah, so all, all positive vibes, very exciting time. Talk to us a little bit about some upcoming trips, travel. Are you streaming? What's your schedule like in the near future? Yeah. Any WSOP? So I've been pretty inconsistent with 2019 because some, some personal reasons I had to take some time off, get mentally healthy again. But I've really hit it hard the last two weeks. And like momentum has come back to my Twitch channel. People are really excited. So I'm on a pretty strict schedule, streaming five days a week. Uh, start at 4 p.m. Mountain Time, 6 p.m. Eastern. I play the high stakes, you know, basically available to me on the nightly schedule. Uh, and it's really exciting. You know, the numbers are back up. People are excited. Three final tables last stream. We got a win in uh, what was a $33 tournament there. So... I'm really good, good, happy to be back on the grind. The trip's coming up. I got the WSP main event. I swear, even in the future, if I don't play cards professionally, if I'm like a dentist in 20 years, I think I'm still going to go play the main event. Got to play the main it's event. It's just like, it's just the best, you know? Um, yeah, that's how so I that's, feel too. I got my baby. I was like, this is the first WSOP. I won't be the entire summer. I'm going to be in and out. But like, I'm playing the main unless it was during my the birth of my child like it's just you kind of have to i think if you're a poker player i mean it's just yeah. that special so that's good we'll we'll definitely be there at that time but other than that you might is there any other events there you'll play or you're just gonna come i mean there's some there's some local calgary events i think right now i want to dedicate most of my time to studying getting as good as i can and just twitch streaming and creating awesome shows also i'm on a nice little health kick which is cool you know again i was very sad at some moments in 2019 with some family deaths inspired me to live healthier so I've changed my diet working out and done down 10 pounds so, so there's a long way to go in that journey it's not well, easy have, man like you have peely who's like a fitness superstar yeah. that helps man you can't be sloppy you can't be you don't have yeah. to be fitness model but you can't be out there just wrong when peely's in there just doing you know yeah. you know sumo plex exercises and stuff so that's the guy who's got to help he's got an eight pack she's incredible so she's inspiring me so right now man i'm, I'm super happy i feel like i'm peaking and, and life is really exciting and this uh, party poker sign is like the peak, man. So I'm, I'm really excited. What about you? What, what's WSP this year for you? Uh, man, up in the air. It's going to go. There's the party. Millions is announced for Aria. They're doing one of millions in at the end of, so, um, I think it's the June 28th or 9th. It starts leading up to the main. So maybe you put that on your schedule too. It's a 10K. It's going to be really juicy. Um, that's pretty cool. So like I'm going to go out for the day before that and stay through the main. And then I'll probably go one or two other times for like a week. And you know, honestly, I feel... Part of it is I think the last, I've gotten a little burned out. Like I've always, for the last few years, it's been like every day. If I bust a tournament, I'm in another one. I'm just always going, not stopping. And I don't think that's GTO either. Like I actually, I, maybe this summer, you know, I, have a, I don't have a bracelet. I have a second. I have like, I have a handful of final tables, some close calls. That second one really hurt. Um, but, you know, I don't know, maybe that it might be better to be rested, excited, come in there and come in there on time and like, oh, you know, like now it's not just take it for granted every day, six weeks straight. It's let's grind, let's fire and and come in just like really motivated and excited. And also I do want to do some work and, and study time and, and hang out at home more. So um, that's you know, that, I, mean, that, I think it might be better actually playing a little less volume. To, and, to touch on that point, you can give yourself a massive edge, especially in live poker by starting the tournament in a more prepared state than your opponents yeah. in terms of sleep 
Get some good sleep. Your brain can't make good decisions if you're tired. Don't be hungover. If you're playing a big tournament, like, you know, maximize your breaks. If you have a 10-minute break, go outside, get some fresh air. That sun on your skin is just going to, you know, release some dopamine and make you feel better. Eat healthy fruits, snacks, like nuts. And this sounds stupid. It works, though. I promise you. If you're, ch- if, if you're on a poker dinner break and you're scarfing down a bunch of carbs and, like, three pieces of pizza, are you going to play optimally, like, at the end of the day when there's four more levels left? Right. The set, a lot of people laugh at me when I say this stuff, but, like, these basic fundamentals, you yeah. will be at a massive advantage if you sit down at your poker table, rested, eating healthy, yeah. and, just worked out. And have a game plan because, man, I'm sure you've noticed it in Calgary at the local live events and it's for sure there's inflection points in a tournament. You should look at the structure. You should know at yeah. this level the, the big blind ante ratio is this. Like the last hour of the night attack, you got people ready to make day twos. People are yeah. near the bubble. It's not always, like, oh, the bubble's three spots away and go crazy. No, like 15 people away and these 1500 person, 40 people, a hundred people away, you know, you should have a plan. You should be ready to attack late at night. People are tired. Like all this stuff does matter. I mean, there's so many live poker is so cool. And no matter what with solvers and all the crazy things or people say poker might die. It's never dying. It's there's always going to be a new game. There's short deck now, you know, party spreading that there's spins. There's, there's five card, Big O. I mean, there's all there's all kinds of variations of poker and online. You know, there's parties doing some new stuff now with the getting rid of HUDs, which is an interesting topic. The whole thing, kind of how they're. I mean, I don't know how that's all going to play out. I, I, I like that where they're going with it, but it's kind of as a player who uses information. You know, not even crazy. Like it's sort of a weird vibe, right? Like I'm trying to imagine streaming and, and not and playing online and not have a, a HUD. It's kind of like yeah. it's a little interesting because there's a lot to talk about there too. It's like, oh, well, this guy's stats are this, and I'm doing that. You know, so that'll be an interest. That's a whole other topic. But I'm, I'm excited to try. I think I use my HUD a lot more than other people. I use it so much. If I mean, a HUD by itself cannot really help that much. You need fundamentals plus that information. It has to be the combination. Yeah. But like if, if I am multi-table and I look up and somebody's raised the button, if I go to my HUD and they have a 30% button raised or a... Shit. Cut out. Based there. off of... Hold on. You, um, you can Kevin, you cut out for a sec. If they have a 30% and you cut out... Oh, yes. I, so I was just saying, I use my HUD and I rely on it so much. That being said, I'm really happy to see Party like make this step. I think this is cool. If everyone's on an even playing field, hey, I'm all for it. Let's let's play without HUDs. Let's see what can happen. But I was just saying, you know, I use. You know, um, so it's very, 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 very important to how I play poker. And I'll need to make some major adjustments without it, but I'm I'm all for it. Let's see what happens. Okay, yeah, I'm with you too. You cut out for a sec, man. I think that, like I said, this internet's getting uh, rebooted here and so tilting. Same in the Bahamas. I was playing. It's like the internet is always. <sighs> what I would do to just have a hundred hundred upload, and I, it's crazy in Miami. Even you can't get it like that really or at this current spot but um yeah bro it's it's gonna be fun man i think it's great for poker i love that parties taking chances they're taking risks they're talking to the players they're take they're talking to the people they're trying to make it fair and engaging and, and exciting and new and innovative and there's a lot of new things coming so it's, it's also a lot of software updates the replayer i know is getting done soon too which is cool because the replayer is a little tilting to me on there but that's going to be you know world class um it's a lot of, a lot of cool stuff going on what about you let's look at the let's look at the lobby for a second man because it's not a hobby let's take it to the lobby and talk about give us a little bit of a glimpse at your schedule if you will as well as um as well as what maybe is coming up. Are you, do you play any PLO? Someone's asking about that. I dabble. I dabble a little bit. Uh, I like the PLO. I'm very bad. I'm very bad at all the other formats. The only game I've really put some time into is No Limit Hold Up. But uh, for the stream, it's nice to have some variety. So I will put my foot into the pool when it comes to the Omaha series. I'm not going to jump head in. Uh, so we'll play a little bit of that. Uh, the nightly schedule, it has some good stuff, actually. It has it, some really good structures. The 55 deep freeze, the 33 leg grind is really good. The 109 gladiator. And I, I'm sure in the future party, if we can get like another 215 or another 109 at night, it would be nice to play a little bit higher stakes schedule. Uh, um, in terms of the high stakes, it's a tiny bit thin at the end, but it's a great start. And um, there's a lot of, there's, some good, there's an 82 dollar hybrid that's really fun. So it's, uh, it's, for my time zone, not bad at all. Pretty, pretty, pretty impressive. 
Yeah, they are just scrolling through right now. So guys, again, you can catch Kevin on Twitch at is it's Kevin Martin TV or Twitch TV slash Kevin Martin. Yeah. Twitch TV slash Kevin Martin. So make sure you check that out. That's where he's going to be in about 27 minutes. So Kevin, there's a lot. I want to keep going. I want to shout out Cards Chat. They said nice shirt. We are rocking a little Cards Chat. Great spot. So we got that on today. I don't know if you're familiar with Cards Chat, Kevin. That is my that's my go to for forums. I don't know if you ever have been in there, but it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm kind of unfamiliar. Yeah, no, it's it's unfamiliar. it's legit, dude. It's the real deal. But anyway, they're they're in the chat. They're saying what's up. Congrats to you as well. I see you in there. Cards chat. JJ Corrado, Burnsy, uh, Sheffield sixteen, Baccarat. Anyone? What's up, Kevin Gunn? And we are gonna take it over, Kevin. Let's let's. There are a lot of questions in the chat for you. So hey, let's, let's just let's get moving on that because we are having a little bit of an abbreviated um, podcast with you uh, getting on. I'm sure we can make. A, I'll make a return guest. Yeah, you're not you're not a one you're not a one hit wonder on the flow show. This is a this is the it was an obvious signing day podcast though. I had to we had to get this done. I, we had to sneak this in, so it's good. Um, all right, right away, right into it. Someone said, and th- I'm just reading from the this is I'm going sequentially. This isn't Maybe. trying to needle you. What hurt more, losing the one k flips to all in Pav or having gifted subs in a stream? Oh, it hurts so bad. It hurts so bad. So we were doing heads up, and and also we were playing for a lot of money, but also. To- you lost you to gift subs in your opponent's uh, Twitch chat, so that's a good way to get the community involved. Yeah, I lost 3K flipping the pad the other day. He runs so good. He's just such a sunrunner. He's in the Matrix right now. but The, young, right. the young kid plays like an animal. He, he is a young savage. But how we did five 1K flips, and I'm like, okay, if I go 3 2 I'm going to lose a K. Like 3 three two is fine. Somehow he beat me 4 1. I just sent $3,000. 4 1 hurts there. I was I was there for that. I actually, that guy, it was, in, it was engaging to watch. There was, there was definitely going to be pain somewhere. And um, that I was, love, love neutral EV gambling. Like if we go to a casino, sure, I'll play some like small stakes blackjack with drinks as long as there's a social environment. But in terms of gambling money where you're going to lose, I don't, I don't, you know. It's just on my style. But right. $1,000 I had at Blackjack, it's like, no, you're getting smashed. The casino is such an edge. Yeah, you're not. In terms of TV, you friend got on friend, gambling, I will flip coins for lots of money because it's fun. Nobody's, I got I to introduce you to Antonio and uh, Esfandiari this summer. You should, he loves that stuff. and not, He likes nothing more than paying. He'll flip. He'll even pay. He'll pay juice to flip. Like on 1000 he'll pay oh, 50 man. just to flip, just to see the pain. So you guys might, uh, you might, it's careful though because, you know, it can get escalated. He's, he's a little high. He's, he's a no, but he'll flip for whatever, you know, so like you don't have yeah. to, you don't have to go to, go to his terms. Um, let's take some more questions. So will you be at the WSOP this year? You did answer answer that already main event yep main event for sure hopefully we make a run of that all right let's wrap up let's knock through soon as what's your favorite live poker tournament location i'm pretty sure i know that and do you see yourself getting involved with other projects outside of poker as a free agent or just fully committing to the stream i don't know calgary baby calgary's my favorite place to play live poker really fun community here some some talent there is some talent out there but also it's usually pretty juicy If, if you play well you can have a good shot to make some money here. So I love Calgary. Uh, outside of poker, I mean, there's like health and fitness I'm really into right now and a few other things, but poker and streaming are my, my big focuses. Go, hit me, Jeff. All right, someone just said, congrats on the party, Poker Pro. There it is. When will the next Calgary Poker Awards be held? Oh, my God. I think we retired it. The committee fell apart. There was a big fight. Was there uh, a, was a one, award one show? And done. It was a one-time deal? We did a Calgary Poker Awards show. It was... Uh, <laughs> it's basically a parody. It was like the office version of the GPI. And it was really fun. We had a good time with it, but probably a one and done. And I do want to remind everyone here, this is a tweet on my Twitter. We're giving away three. And by we, I mean, yeah, Party Poker, Kevin, myself, we're going to roll three 55 ticket winners to the Omaha series right now uh, at the end of the stream. So if you guys want to ask a question, try to sneak it in. doesn't matter if we ask it or not. We're, you're eligible if you get the retweet and ask a question. Um, someone asked if tomorrow casinos, poker, everything related gaming was banned all over the world. What would you do? Oh, uh, probably Twitch content creation in some other way. Uh, I don't know. That would be very sad. That'd be very sad. I don't know. That's, that's like a dark that. world. It is dark. I'll find Let's something keep... else. I'll find something else. And I get obsessive about things. Whatever I get into, I try to, you know, I put my, even like when I was young, I used to be religious and I was very obsessive. I wanted to be like the, the most religious person. And then quickly I opened up my eyes and, and uh, potentially got out of a very dark path there. I, and then, you know, now I got into poker and I'm just obsessed with it. So I'm, a, I'm an obsessive person. I don't know what the next step would be after poker. Uh, but I'm not really looking to move on just yet. 
All right, we got Sheffield 16 in a live question here on the YouTube stream. And he said, what's Kevin's go-to for a little boost in the middle of a long session? Coffee, sugar-free energy drink, a strong tea smoothie, or something else? Black coffee, no sugar, you don't need that. Black coffee, go outside, a couple deep breaths, fresh air, and 10 push-ups, and you're good to go. You're dialed back in. Uh, there, I like it. Little I like exercise. black coffee. I like, uh, I'm with you on that. Some shots. Um, someone asked, do you play short deck? Do you think that if short deck can push out the standard no limit, hold them in the future? And you know, party poker now spreads it. I don't know if you've dabbled. Uh, I played, I fired two bullets at runner of Reno. Shout out to Jason Somerville. He ran a short deck tournament. It was a lot of fun. If short deck really picked up, I loved it. I could see myself putting some time into it. Whereas like PLO and other mixed games, I, I kind of had fun, but I never really, Saw myself dive into those games. Will it replace Nolan Holdem? I doubt it. I don't think so. The Cadillac. No. <laughs> hard, to, hard to replace the Cadillac. You know? Yeah. It's too pure. Um, someone asked in the chat, are you streaming today? What up, Franco Seggio? Yeah. Yes, he is. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. Come join me. We're on a pretty strict schedule right now. We're on a little bit of an ops week, too. So hopefully we can keep that going. Nice. And um, someone says, what do... Can you imagine yourself without cams? You're kind of the cam king. You won big. We haven't even talked about that, Kevin. Those of you who don't know, Kevin won Big Brother Canada Five, which is pretty incredible. Hundred grand in the rubber band, and that's uh, that was a nice bank, man. That's uh, we should. I, I, I'm a little unprepared today. There's so many things to talk about. I just that that I just could you. So speaking about, we'll answer the question. Can you imagine your life without cams? And can you just tell us a little bit about that experience winning Big Brother Canada for those that don't know what that was like and how, how that maybe has played a role in your poker and gaming strategy yeah. in your life? So two big, let's hit the first one first. Can I imagine my life without cams? I'm actually a, a guy that doesn't really seek out attention that much. Like I have fun with it, but I've really dialed down my social media usage. I even took like Twitter and Instagram off my phone. I still access it, but when I access those social media apps, I have to sit down on my computer and access it with intention. So often I was out with friends and just like going to Twitter for like a little dopamine hit. It's like, why do I need that? You know, I want to be more engaged in my social interactions. So I've, I've been on that for about two months and I haven't gone back. So that's really nice. Um, so yeah, I'll be fine. I don't, I don't need attention. I just, I just like doing my own thing. And yeah. second, the Big Brother Canada. Yeah, that's about what, two, two and a half years now. That was pretty life changing to to go on that show was a dream come true to lose, then get invited back for a second chance and win. I'm known as a very polarizing winner. Some people think I'm an amazing top tier player. Other people have me rated as the worst because I brought a very unique strategy, one that I doubt we will see again anytime soon. Contrarian, Amazing. Man, you gotta be contrarian to win these things. I, I met my the love of my life. Uh, Pee Wee was on the season. So it's one season I got the relationship, the next season I got the cash money. So it worked out pretty well for me. Uh, oh man, yeah. I like it. That's that's huge. Actually, right? season seven is just ending right now in like a week. So I'm gonna go down to Toronto, party for three days. That's like three days of the year. I always go back. All the alumni get together, and you have all these A plus personality. You know, seventy alumni just get hammered and, and have fun. And give me, uh, give me, who's your pick for this season? You got any shout outs? Any friends? Any allies? Any oh, people you want to see win? I mean, they're down to the final five here. This season is uh, not a very good one. It's pretty slow. I, I think Dane, there's a hockey player in there that's probably got it unlocked. Uh, also, Adam. Basically, to sum up this season, there was four alpha males that banded together and they just steamrolled everybody in like an ugly fashion. They just dominated everybody. There's no power shifts. There's no fluctuation. So it made for a pretty stale season, but. There's some good players this year. All right. We got a question in the chat from Theo asking, when did you start to play poker? I started back in 2014. 2014 as a radio announcer. I got into poker just to have fun. I never planned to take it that seriously. Very quickly, I learned that nobody really knew what they were doing at the casino playing poker. And I started winning. I was very careful. I grasped my results. I had a bankroll. I took things very seriously. And after about six months, I was a proven winner at a pretty, pretty decent stake. I was making more money playing live poker than I was at a radio job, and I loved it more. I'd go to my radio job and be studying poker strategy instead of focusing on the radio job. So I was like, yeah, I should probably do this full time. I took a shot. I remember when I called my mom, I was like, hey, mom. Hey, you know how I went to school and did radio schooling for two years? Yeah, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to try to play cards for a living. I think she had a heart attack. But she's came, to, she's accepted it more now. She's seen some good results, some sponsorships. And uh, so it's worked out pretty well for us. And just getting going to am uh, what? I've only been playing poker for like five years now, so we're still a baby. That's awesome. I want to shout out Debbie from Cards Chat. Also, Nick Witten in the building, man. Legend over at Party Poker, man. You got Party Poker royalty coming in to check out the the podcast, seeing what you got, Kevin. It's in there. He's 
He's fired up, man. We got and we got uh we got Elise Schisler in there and Mr. Chris Brimmer in there saying congrats to you as well and about uh, my baby. Appreciate that. And yeah, we look forward to doing some squad streams, man. I'm looking. I'm about to turn it up. Going to be a lot of streams. Going to be bouncing back and forth. Bahamas luckily close by, so should be able to come in and out. Kind of tough with the baby not being able to travel, so I'm not going to be away too long. But Kev, we'll definitely. I want to be one of the first squad stream. I hope to hop in there with you and and maybe Pav Dude, and some please. of the boys on this late night schedule. Um, let's do some more questions. What is it that first attracted you to this freaking game of poker? And Nazir asks. The ability that I knew it was beatable. Yeah, I never, ever liked the concept of roulette or slot machines because I knew that everybody is losing at those games. The ability to make decisions and win money was always really attractive. Um, I thought it was very, very cool. I think, you know, so I was ready to, to put some time in. And then, you know, financially, it turned out pretty well. So, was, you know, waking up every morning, having your own schedule as a young 20-year-old and not answering to any boss, going into a field, making decisions, feeling like you're ahead of the game. It was just uh, everything I wanted. And there are highs, there are lows. I remember moments like, you know, two years in where it's like, do I really want to do this? And there, there are waves. So it's important when you have those highs, those heaters in poker, try to manage your expectations, take a deep breath. You're not going to stay in that heater bill for very long. And also on the other side, when you're down swinging, when you're losing, take a deep breath and, and just keep working hard and you'll come out of it. So everything about it, I'm very romantic about poker. It's, it's done amazing, amazing things for my life. I couldn't be more grateful. Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm with you on that all the way. Uh, someone asking, what do you attribute your live results down to? You did cover this um, in various ways, but how, give us a, a real quick summary on what you'd say that. Hundreds of hours of studying, lots of hard work, lots of focus. And then more so a shit ton of run good. I'm telling you guys, I've made so I won so many flips, so many all ins when I needed to. I could have played that same schedule. I think if I had okay results, but like I can't deny how much of a luck box I was during those live runs. Luck, being lucky in in spots it matters for sure. That's not nothing wrong with running good in in key spots. We have another question here, which I'm not trying to show. What is your place in the preferred world and why a hug to kevin and jeff your place in the preferred world i don't it could be a translation issue looks like from um colombia maybe or venezuela but um i'm not trying to understand that but i guess i don't know okay <laughs> i'm not sure on that one um, what's my place in the preferred world that's a, yeah there must be a misword there uh what makes me happy yeah makes me happy let's do that like uh intense relationships uh, like, you know, good, solid, engaged friendships, connecting with people, inspiring people, positivity, inspiring other people to be their best. Again, a lot of people look at the positive, like, message I try to provide. They, they honestly, it's, it's so easy just to be negative in this world. There's so much of it. But I, I feel like, you know, latching on with positive and optimistic people. I've been very, very blessed that I've never been the smartest person in a room in terms of my friendships. I've always had, you know, smarter and more intelligent people in the room to guide me, which is always really nice. If you are the smartest person in your friend group, uh, you know, they can be your friends, but like maybe maybe try to go out a bit of it as well. I've also become like, I realized in your early 20s that like cutting friendships is perfectly fine. Like if you're not connecting with a person, if they're negative, if they're not allowing you to be your best, like you don't need to hang out with that person. You are allowed to, you're allowed to say like, hey, you know, I you know I'm busy or whatever. Um, so you don't have to make everybody happy. That's another big thing that's that's been super big and, uh, we could go on and on forever. I mean, the, the lifestyle, healthy living is a way bigger topic than poker will ever be. Absolutely. Did you? T all right, another question here. Did you take anything of value from Big Brother into poker? If so, what was it and why? Yeah, people are different. <laughs> Managing uh, people's relationships is often very, very tricky. I wasn't very good at that aspect of Big Brother. Often when it came to relationships and having people work with me, it was a big struggle. And that was a little bit because of you know a lack of ability for me. Also because it was a bit of a threat. Uh, it's tough to say. Did I learn anything from Big Brother? I mean, I, I learned that I was mentally capable of a lot and that um, through tough times, I was able to power through. Like there's being isolated in society for three months in a house with no contact, no stimulation is quite challenging. And I'm happy I powered through that. But uh, man, I, it's still crazy. I, I never watched the season where I won. I still haven't watched it. I'm sure it's still too weird. It's still like icky in a way to watch yourself on TV. I'm sure in a few years we'll, we'll go through it. But what an incredible experience. We could have a three hour podcast on that alone. I did, I did a 10 day meditation course, no writing, reading, talking, 
um, whatever else. You just literally nothing, but it was crazy. And to me that you basically sounds like you did like a three month, like disconnect from the outside world. Well, how did, that's gotta be pretty mentally insane because you got, yeah. I, I would just feel so much angst. Like right now, if you just said, Hey, you got to go out and be away from everything for three months. I mean, granted, I have a, I have a child now. I have a wife, but like, I just can't imagine being disconnected from everything like Twitch and work and what, you know, life, family, just like not knowing. I mean, crazy stuff. A lot can happen in three months, let alone three days, oh, yeah. 10 days. So Dude, how was that? Hardest, was there time? Yeah. Was there like a period of an inflection point where like six days in, five days in, did it get easier? I would imagine. I would think like the first couple of weeks would be really difficult. First couple of weeks was tough. I mean, you you are pretty distracted because you're trying to stay alive in the game and like you're actually trying to yeah. function in that environment where you're trying to be friends with everyone, but you're also trying to beat them in a competition. Very, very interesting. Yeah, what, what they don't show is that there's a sequester period before the show starts where you're in a hotel room for basically 10 days without any contact. You can't leave the room. You don't have, you know, there's it's it's wild. The, uh, the mental pressure that I put on you is quite a bit. I described Big Brother as both the best time of my life and also the worst. Like, it was definitely a, a very, uh, very taxing mental experience. But, but overall, I mean, to, to win it after such a long three months away from society was incredible. For sure. How he poker mental? I'm not trying to understand. Maybe do you have a poker mentor? Uh, maybe that's a question. I'm not sure. Uh, I've had, you know, poker mentors are really, really cool. Like I've had Jason Somerville, you know, kind of coach me and help me out for a long time. And I've had people like Ricky Ray the GTO, who I consider one of the best players on Twitch. I send him hands all the time. So, uh, yeah, anytime I, that's, a, I think it's important to be humble. Anytime I'm around a better poker player who's had better results than me, I love asking them questions, sending them hands and like gotten coached. But Ben's, I've worked really hard, but I've had immense opportunity handed to me, and thankfully, I've taken advantage. That's that's uh, no, it's for sure. That like getting getting to talk with elite players and sit and go over spots that you know that they know, because it's one thing to talk with mm -hmm. buddies and people that are like poker players, but it's one to like when you go to the absolute best or the people that are do have the best results and and be able to get that kind of clarity easily is nice. I see JJ Crowd in the chat saying, "My two year old daughter just walked in, pointed and said, hey, Kevin and Jeff.'" That's strong, man. That's that's, that's strong that's recognition at two. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, fellow streamer in the chat on Twitch. Kevin will be streaming very soon. I want to. We have to do the three fifty-five dollar tweet giveaway. I want to make sure we get a few more questions in, and then we'll do that and let Kevin be on time for his stream. Um, how would you describe your journey from what led you to create that no more mediocrity Reddit post in twenty sixteen to where you are now? What would you describe your journey that led you? to Oh yeah, that? that was crazy. I mean. So in 2016, I was fed up losing just over it and decided to make some differences and some changes. And then I just didn't want to lose at poker anymore. I was so over it. I was so frustrated losing money and then also like feeling like you weren't as uh, competitive as other people. No, it's just like something clicked. I'm like, you know, if I'm going to be in poker, I, I want to get try to be as good as I can be. Um, so it's crazy, man. There's a lot of hard work, a lot of you know low moments, but really powered through. Kept working on my game and thankfully it ran pretty well. That's that's pretty crazy. The between like in 26, dude, Jeff, it's just nuts, man. In 2016, I made a post on Reddit being like, I suck and I'm gonna change. And then last year, I made like a quarter million dollars in live poker profit. So and you know, and it, that could have been a lot less if I didn't run so well in certain moments. But I have to pat myself on the back. I, I like to think a lot of aspects, but to go from I suck, I'm gonna change to a quarter million in profit two years later is pretty incredible. It's a lot of cheese. That's uh, especially you're talking about playing live 500 buy-ins and then online, I don't, your average buy-in is what? Uh, just like 50, $55 right now. So, I mean, I mean, that's a, that's a ridiculous ROI. Like, you know, it's, you, you look at that proportionally in buy-in size. That's uh, it's crazy. Like that's probably one of the highest, I mean, maybe the highest there was like, no, I don't think there's many people making that great. And you wouldn't play a lot of live either. I mean, you were not playing a ton. Um, yeah. It was pretty fun to run that well. Um, yeah, so let's see the bounty builder to play bounties or not play bounties. That's my question from Carmen. Ooh, bounty builders are really fun and really profitable, but they're pretty sick. The variance goes through the roof, right? There's a lot of spots where you have to hunt 40 bigs with Jack 10 offsuit or, you know, ace nine offsuit, or a hand where you normally uh, wouldn't get involved. So bounty builders are a newer form. They're very, very profitable because they're very fun. A lot of recreational players, like if you look at it, you know, a 109 knockout tournament versus a normal 109, way more people are going to play the knockout tournament because it's way more fun. So I uh, highly recommend the Razor Edge Bounty Dealer course. 
NCB handles it from a math perspective. I'm not great at it. I'm still really working on banner blood game. I feel like there's a lot of guessing. There's a lot of spots where I'm like, I think I'm supposed to hunt, you know, 25 bigs with King 10 suited here or whatever. Um, but yeah, you can, uh, people are doing very well. People are beating bounty builders at a very, very, very high ROI for sure. You just have to buckle down with the variants. It can get pretty sick. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. That's a great form. It's a really innovative, there's, there's a ton. I mean, the percentage of those now, they got the KO series on Party Poker coming on May 12th. It's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, the, it's exactly the reasons you said make it. It's awesome. So, um, first of all, from Chris Robinson, he says, big fan of you both, Kevin. You have grinded out oppressive tournament wins and BB, the Canada, Big Brother, Canada 5. What is more grueling competition to win and why, Big Brother, or the main event of the WSOP? Uh, oh, it's really tough, really close. Um, I mean, just, uh, wow, both are very, very tough. Which one's harder to win? I think I'd rather win the main event. Winning eight million would be much better than a hundred thousand. Uh, but the process of like getting cast on Big Brother, like you know, it's that's a that's a game in its own. It's like getting cast on these reality TV shows. There's definitely a skill in that. So there's like ten thousand people who apply. They whittle it down to five hundred, then to forty-five, and then to the final sixteen that go on the show. So to make it through that grueling casting process uh, and then you know win, uh, I'm very very proud of that. But I would rather win the main event WSOP. That's pretty tough. Only that, that happens to one person a year. That's pretty rare. Absolutely. Um, how was it? Oh, let me see this other one. Women are closer to you for being a celebrity of reality or now for being a famous <laughs> poker player? What? Women? Yeah. Well, I guess, I mean, maybe he means um, women are closer to you. Obviously, you have Peely in a serious relationship. I mean, maybe he's asking you, do you feel like more notoriety has come from poker or from Big Brother Canada in general? Uh, probably Big Brother Canada reached a larger population. Like a lot of people do watch that show. Uh, you know, if people say hi on the street or whatever, it's usually from Big Brother Canada. But once in a while, once in a while, I'll be on someone like, hey, man, I watch your stream. Thanks, buddy. That's awesome. Uh, women? Nah, dude. I, women don't talk to me. <laughs> How has your transition been from leaving a reality show and being a pro team player? Uh, it's been interesting. Uh, it's been very, very, very fun. The reality show... Definitely, it took me a couple months to transition back into real life uh, because, you know, you're out of society for three months. No, I, I mean, poker, professional poker has its high and lows, but I wake up every day really excited to, to continue working at it. You know, often if I have a losing session, I just can't wait to get back out there the next day and, and try to put some green numbers on the screen, you know? And I, yes, that makes sense. What is your favorite beer from M Burnsy 23 big Twitch supporter there? Ooh, ah, uh, dang. I, I mean, what was I drinking on the Lucky Lager? Classic. I, I don't mind a cheap beer. I love all beer. Um, Try to stay healthy, though. Beer has a lot of those calories, buddy. And, uh, I mean, I, I love a good beer, though. That, that's one thing I, I'll probably not cut out for health's sake. It's just too yummy. Beer's just way too good. How, how old? You're 27 now, Kevin? How old? 26, 26. 26 years young. Crazy, man. It's crazy. Um, so let's see. Well, we're going to, we're going to do this, the, the giveaways here. Uh, someone asking, how is how are you so good at live poker? Is it the live reads? Uh, very little on live reads. It's just playing the, I play fun, like solid fundamentals, solid opening ranges. And again, just pay attention. Like pay attention to your table. You know, whether there's a fun player in the big blind or it's just you have to adjust so much. Like if you're on the button, if you're on the button and there's two regs in the blinds, you can't open queen six offsuit, queen seven offsuit. You're not going to make. But if you're on the button and there's two people who are weaker opponents, raise queen six. Like you can make a lot of money with queen six offsuit depending on your opponents behind. So just like, again, an absolute intensity, knowing the lineup at the table, adjusting your opening ranges and, uh, and then running like God. That's a good way to finish it. Uh, how many uh, how many tournaments have you played in your entire poker career? Obviously, no way to tell online, but I mean, exactly. I, I'm sure we could probably give a decent estimate in terms of tournaments. Like, or, or I mean, maybe it's actually, I don't, I don't know. Started keeping tough to tough to estimate. Like probably like 400 live tournaments. I mean, some some of the live tournaments I, I'm in for five or six bullets. Like I fired pretty hard. I kept careful results in 2018 and 2019, but both. both like if anything later than that, we'll, we'll never know. That's uh, gone let's into the history books forever. Let's do one more here. We are. I, I know you want to get probably right on time. We're gonna we'll knock out these three retweet giveaway here. Final question. Thank you, Card Chat, for that retweet. Uh, let's see one more 
uh, from Eric Garland. Garland's luck asking, do you prefer live versus online poker and why? I love going back and forth between the two. It's very easy to get bored and tilted with one. So like, you know, a bunch of live poker. All right. Go, uh, going back and forth is the best. Online in terms of getting your game is just where it's at. You can play tens of thousands of hands in a week. You can really analyze your game. You can really work hard. And then live poker is just fun. You know, the fields are a little bit softer. It's a little more social. You get to talk to people. So I like to uh, switch back and forth. I enjoy them both equally, I'd say. All right. Yeah, it's tough, man. I think the Twitch, the, for me, I just love the Twitch and the, the engaging so much. But there is something about getting stack live when you're at a live poker table down to the final two tables three tables yeah, you got big fun. chips the excitement the the builds but you know online too it's cool because you got the you can people get to you, you know you talk about live it's yourself when you're on twitch you could have thousand two three four five you know you're, what's your biggest twitch stream I, mean, I think you won the 22 a big twenty thousand person tournament or something what's what's the most viewers you've had on a on a show uh i don't know it probably got up to like six thousand nothing not, not that big not that six thousand is big i mean that's a that's a six thousand is big yeah it's a, it's a, it's a you really think about it. it's kind of crazy you can feel the electricity in the, the building when it gets to that level and you just know the room gets bigger and and people are uh people are sweating and and it's cool so yeah it's twitch is twitch is sort of hard for me to beat with with poker nowadays it's just so fun yeah. to to do but live poker is great as well um all right let's knock this out kevin i want to let you go on time here um real quick so we are going to load up the tweet it's still you still got another second here for today uh to get it in let me see how do we do this copy link to tweet we'll go here kevin i'll just let you tell me when we'll count it down uh, we'll do three of these real quick we'll cut it we'll let you go start your stream on time you're already loaded up mm -hmm. ready to go this is exciting. I know you're, you got, man, I, I, that's fun. You got your, your launch day with Party Poker on yeah, Twitch right now, much. guys. You get to go see him play in the flesh and ask him questions direct. So let's, uh, let's tell me. Tell me when for the first one. Yeah. Boom. Someone just scooped a 20. David Huber, congrats. You got a 55 ball. Wow. Actually, you know what? Uh, man, we're gonna have to. Well, we're gonna do three of them anyway. So let's just knock it down. He doesn't follow us because you gotta follow us. You can unfollow us. I don't mind, but I don't want to tweet out to my anytime I do a giveaway. So that's the you can no problem. Unfollow me afterward, but uh, gotta follow us so we can message you. We'll we'll leave that on the side. Um, let's do it again, Kevin, and give me the countdown. Okay. Now. Boom, someone's just getting a 55 spot. This guy looks serious. Zdrov from, I'm not sure. He's uh, He looks like he's got a 55 ticket and he's hitting the retweet. So there you go, man. Congrats. See, he does follow RIU. So that's uh, 55 coming. We got one more at least. I don't know. I'll let Kevin make the ruling on this. It's uh, it's questionable to not, you got to follow the, the guidelines. But let's do, we got one more for sure. Kevin, you're, tell me. You're Jeff the ref. You're Jeff the ref. I, I am ref. This is call. a tough call, actually. I don't know how I feel about this, but I can't really notify him. So, all right, tell me when. Now. Boom. Third one, it is Natalia. Speaking of the females out there, there's a follower of Kevin. She's got a nice profile pic. She's got a 55 ticket for the Omaha series, getting it done. Very cool. And, uh, man, David Huber, guys, what do we do? Do we re-roll or not? Um, gambling regulations. Send them off to the bin. GG, Dave. You got to follow the stream. Got to GG. I think it's just out. Again, I can't really yeah, notify him. I'm not going to tweet out bin. for a ticket. Sorry, David. Respect, brother. Um and one more then, Kevin. Tell me when, brother. This is the last All one. Right. We're going to let you go stream. Now. Boom. Third, coming out. Never tilt again. There we go. That's a mental mindset. He does follow the instructions. He does have a $55 Omaha series ticket from Party Poker. Kevin, it has been a pleasure to join. You will be a multiple podcast for sure. Hopefully celebrating a yes. live win. I got a good feeling at the main event. We should do a little swap for the WSOP main event. I feel I feel like it's yes. someone I just something electric's happening this year. It just feels right. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, let's Thanks, talk buddy. about that. Let's have some fun. We'll see you in squad mode very soon once I get back to the Bahamas. We'll do some streaming, dreaming, Hakeeman, Willie Beeman, never steaming, Kevin Rob Martin in the building. Check them out. Twitter, Instagram, all the good stuff. Twitch.tv slash Kevin Martin and lock the doors, call a doctor. Go check them out on Twitch and we'll see you guys on the next podcast. See you guys soon. Peace. Okay, I'm going to jump right into it, buddy. Later. You're the best. Okay, Enjoy. talk soon. Thanks, man. Congrats again.
Kevin Martin, everyone, go check him out on Twitch. We got another podcast on Monday. We're gonna have Alan Widman in the building, another member of the team Party Poker, and he is an animal, absolutely ridiculously talented streamer, gamer, method, SEO. You guys wanna check that out with some huge podcast guests coming up as well. And just so you guys know, we are gonna be on Spotify, iTunes, so those of you that like the live YouTube content will have that most of the time, but sometimes it'll just be voice only, and we will be on all of the different channel outlets for podcastings. Got our main sponsor here, Party Poker. Pretty, pretty sweet. Going to be doing uh, some stuff with Podcastly. They're going to have tr- time stamps, transcripts. We're going to get audio clips. We're going to turn it up and we're going to really press on here. I, I love the podcast. I love your engagement. I love you guys coming in. Cards chat in the in the building, man. Thank you for the support. We are rocking them today as well. And uh, I do do some posting. If you guys have questions, you can go to Cards Chat, ask me anything. I it, There's some forums in there. I do pop in there. And if you guys want to tag me, happy to try to answer questions you have. There's been some really great ones. Um, shout out to everyone who's here. Thank you. And Kevin, again, signing with Party Poker. Really, really big addition to the team. One of the great streamers and players and uh, really talented and fun to watch. So make sure you go check them out. A um, lot, of, lot of news for you guys. Got a special guest next Wednesday can't reveal it but very special alan on monday gonna be fun i mean we're starting to knock out we got we got elliot rowe and um ben's antoine who we have to do we had to reschedule last week with the baby coming so we got at least three podcasts next week i mean it's a lot gonna try to stream as much as possible uh in the near future again back and forth to the bahamas pretty pretty easy and i'm gonna cut it we'll see you guys very soon thanks again and uh let's just keep it rolling 2019 big year see you guys